Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. It happened yesterday afternoon, Judge Torres denies SEC's motion to strike the fair notice defense guys in the Ripple SEC case. This brought to us by Crypto Law US here on Twitter. Just added to our document library, uh, order from Judge Annalisa Torres that denies the SEC's motion to strike. And the link is there if you guys are interested. Of course, everybody in the XRP community is very excited about this. XRP Crypto Wolf SEC has been denied. Rejection must feel good <laughs> for them. Uh, we got Generation XRP down here. We have to have a settlement discussion within 14 days too. So important to note that guys, and we are on day 11. And so here is the motion accordingly, the SEC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense. Uh, affirmative defense is denied. In conclusion, for the foregoing reasons, the SEC's motion is denied. The clerk of court is directed to terminate the motion uh, at ECF number 128. So that is a, an internal court code. So ordered and it was dated yesterday in New York, New York, signed by Annalisa Torres, the judge on the case. And uh, here's just another one from uh, Coining203 here on Twitter. SEC motion to strike fair notice defense is denied, uh, listed here in the docket text, in case you thought maybe the letter was a forgery. <laughs> so what happened with XRP price over the last several hours? Wow, take a look at that, guys. XRP on the hourly, and uh, we can see, it did see a significant gain on this news, went up over 16%, 16.75%. Uh, now it is down though, so uh, sellers were taking profits. Price generally coming back down right now to 78 and a half cents, uh, but it was up as high as about 85 cents. So uh, interesting to see that price fluctuation. Uh, and that was based on the news, however, not sustained. So, um, you know, the rest of the crypto market, uh, follows Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin didn't really do too much over the last several hours. This is Bitcoin uh, on the hourly and you can see Bitcoin uh, has just been kind of flat. So XRP specifically seeing this movement, Bitcoin, I guess I should mention, is trading right now at about 39,100. Uh, here, let's just talk about Bitcoin briefly right now. Bitcoin still trading sideways. So no movement for Bitcoin, uh, nothing really to talk about there. Uh, today, I really did want to focus on this latest update from the Ripple SEC case. Uh, and to just give you guys some context, I've talked a little bit about this, why the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is a lose-lose situation. So uh, I mentioned in a previous video I did this past week, uh, the Joseph Grunfest interview that he did with Tony from uh, Thinking Crypto. Ultimately, he said, no matter how this turns out, we are going to be losers. According to his statement, it seems even if the SEC wins the battle, they could end up losing the war. And I think that that is becoming more and more apparent uh, as we're seeing these decisions come down. The former SEC commissioner was one of the first people to criticize the decision to go forward with the XRP lawsuit. In fact, Grunfest had sent a letter to related commissioners before the complaint was filed eventually. Nevertheless, this move to sue Ripple Labs was quite unpopular, even among SEC officials. In this regard, Grunfest asserted, it is hardly a secret I had questions about the judgment involved in bringing the lawsuit against XRP. I had questions about the timing, implications, and policy. Is this a matter that is best addressed from a social perspective by bringing a lawsuit or saying, let's look at our regulations? So he had warned uh, at that time Chairman Jay Clayton about this, but um, they ignored his advice and they went along with the lawsuit anyway. Regardless of the winner, the lawsuit has a high probability that no matter who wins gets us further away from a good situation. This is what he said. In fact, he criticized the XRP lawsuit, not on the grounds of impropriety, but of judgment. He further added that if the SEC wins, we get a crazy regime where we'll try to fit square pegs in round holes. And that was the video clip that I showed you guys last week. If XRP wins, then arguably one of the very few cops we have on the beat winds up being weakened. No matter how it turns out, we're going to be losers, he concluded. Surprisingly, he even inquired, does this litigation really help us achieve any of these results? So uh, there is a heavy burden. The aforementioned lawsuit could finish by August 26, 2022. That's per Jeremy Hogan's previous estimate, uh, be it by settlement or court decision. When asked about the outcome, Grunfest explained why it will be a complicated issue regardless. And here's a quote. A lot of public discourse is around the question of whether XRP is a security or not, but there are other issues here that I think are intellectually even more intriguing and may even be more outcome determinative. So the fair notice defense is one thing, and um, the is XRP a security, is it not a security? That question, I think, is, um, I, I agree with Joseph Grunfest, obviously. It's not just about that. This is a bigger picture situation that I think 
could, um, well, I mean, I know will have a huge implication on the rest of the cryptocurrency market in the United States. I've always uh, held that position. And I think, you know, as more and more of this information is coming out, we are getting a better picture of how that is going to look. So what is this going to look like? Brad Garlinghouse also tweeting out, if you weren't paying attention, then you should be now. Huge win for Ripple today. And he posted this at about 3 p.m. yesterday, uh, retweeting out Stuart Alderotti's tweet here. Today's order makes it clear there's a serious question whether the SEC ever provided Ripple with fair notice that its distributions of XRP since 2013 would ever be prohibited under the securities law. So let's just go back to Brad Garlinghouse's tweet thread here. And while we would have preferred the cases against Chris and me to end now, the SEC must now prove its claims. We are confident that ultimately all of them will be dismissed. So there are a few things about this case. There are the uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson uh, suits, the separate lawsuits that were filed against them that I'm going to touch on briefly. And then there's also uh, the manipulation of price of XRP, which I will talk about too a little bit. The judge denies SEC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense. This is a huge win for the XRP community as well. Matt from XRP Crypto Wolf, uh, tag XRP down here saying, congrats, Brad Garlinghouse. I have not purchased any shares of Ripple, so I don't have any financial interest in Ripple, but I may have to scoop up some investment contract soon. Uh, in the meantime, I continue to use my decentralized XRP as a bridge currency. So we're getting a lot of congratulatory remarks here from Jungle Inc., DJ Peter Vass, XRP Rose, uh, Tony Edward from Thinking Crypto, uh, and many more, XRP Crow, Bank XRP, a lot of people in the XRP community realizing that this is big news. And I mean, even though, and I know, okay, so back to the price, because we thought, okay, fair notice, that is the biggie, that is what's going to really change things, and uh, I know we, we initially saw that price pump. Again, though, this is only a small microcosm of what is to come, guys, because we're still not out of the woods yet. This is another step in the right direction, but there is still work to do, and this is why uh, I'm not too concerned that it did pop to 85 cents, and now it's right back down to about 78 and a half cents, because I know the momentum will continue once we get a more solid verdict. Good to see the judge rejecting the SEC's attempt to prevent Ripple from pursuing its fair notice defense. It's even more imperative that the sun sets on the SEC's regulation by enforcement approach. This coming from Stuart Alderati. I know I'm jumping around from tweet thread to tweet thread, but uh, just going back to his tweet thread there, wanted to mention that because that is important. Regulation by enforcement, the SEC's actions, you know, as per Joseph Grunfest here saying it is a lose-lose situation, and uh, I think we are starting to see the beginnings of that. So also saw this from Tim R614 on Twitter. Fox Business also making a note of the Ripple SEC development. We've got Charles Gasparino and Liz Clayman talking about it. Listen to this. Between the Securities and Exchange Commission and Ripple. Joining us now with the latest is Charlie Gasparino. Okay, What's so going I, on? I, I, I believe I've got my hands around this. You know, this some of this stuff gets a little te technical, but as part of the case, so SEC sues Ripple saying it used XRP as a security and it should have registered. It does XRP. Therefore, it's not a currency. Yeah, and therefore, no, no exchange will take it. You can't, you know, your value, your value goes down dramatically. And uh, but Ripple has said that the SEC did this out of the blue, and they filed a motion to have the um, the case dismissed because the SEC didn't give it fair warning that um, that XRP was considered a security. Okay, bear with me here. Uh, the SEC filed a motion to get that part, that motion dismissed. The judge said, no, that motion could stay. He still has to rule on the motion of fair notice that whether or not Ripple uh, was given fair notice. Now, if the SEC loses the, no the motion, and then it obviously did today on the, loses the motion to get it thrown out, it has to lose the motion to, if it loses the motion that it did not give fair notice, this case probably is over. And that's why you see it. There's a greater likelihood this case could get thrown out based on this ruling. And that's what you're seeing right now. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying when you unpack all this, the motion to get this case dismissed, filed by Ripple, is the way I understand it, because the SEC didn't give it fair notice while it was issuing that XRP that it was an illegal issuance of that XRP, sale of that XRP, I should say. That can stay, and there is still a chance the judge can rule in, X, in Ripple's favor saying that USEC screwed up by not giving it fair notice. 
this case is out, you know, Ripple wins. I mean, that's what that's the bet you're seeing now. That's why it's popping. And, and by the way, Bitcoin is down 2.6% you know, this is, today. You've got Ethereum down, so here's the thing. Terra's down, but XRP is moving on this it, it, Now, here's the thing. I, well, we just we got a couple things here. Ripple tells Fox Business they believe the motion will lead to all SEC claims ultimately being dismissed. Um, well, that could be wishful thinking, uh, but I get we, it. Well, I get it. I mean, it's kind of what I'm telling you. Uh, we have John Deaton, one of the uh, private securities lawyers. So that is clip one of two, courtesy of Tim here on Twitter, uh, Charles Gasparino talking about a few things, uh, basically giving us some oversight with regards to the lawsuit and giving us some possible outcomes that even Ripple noted. The fact that this could actually lead to all of the SEC's arguments being thrown out. Liz Clayman, if you guys did hear, uh, did say that, that could be wishful thinking and it probably won't happen. And even Charles Gasparino saying, you know, I'm not saying this is a likely scenario, but it is certainly on the table. There's also the fact that this could end in a settlement or that this case could just get thrown out altogether. Uh, let me bring you guys part two. It's only another 43 seconds. Listen to this. Uh, private securities lawyers that is aiding Ripple in the in the um, in the case because he's an XRP holder. Uh, it's pretty. You know, John doesn't bulls. I almost said he doesn't BS. Okay, he calls it kind of straight. Uh, as big a win as this is for Ripple, it's even a bigger loss for the SEC. It, it, I think it kind of is because the judge is saying there is some reasonable grounds that you didn't give them. Um, a fair notice. So we're going to keep it in there and I'll decide on it. Um, so just keep in mind, I, I don't tell people to buy anything based on this, but net net, it's a good ruling for the XRP holders and for Ripple. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go to pivot a little bit to... Going to stop the clip there. Uh, Charles Gasparino there pivoting to another story. So ultimately, for XRP hodlers, this is a good thing. John Deaton, as you heard there in that clip, chimes in saying this is a bad day for the SEC. At this point, it sounds as though their goose is cooked. And Wrath of Kahneman jumping in, giving his two cents on the case. Ripple will be allowed to argue its case as the SEC's motion to strike fair notice defense is denied. Has the judge underscored some interesting points that may play out later? He's saying, I'm no lawyer, but seems like there are two important footnotes. First, the SEC originally asked the judge to consider 72 other prior enforcements and draw conclusions about their similarities to Ripple. The judge flatly said no. So think about that for a second. 72 other prior enforcements and the judge said no. Those do not have anything to do with what we're talking about now. It's only for striking fair notice, but seems significant that the judge wants to hear the unique merits of Ripple's defense. And so uh, he's attached a screen grab to this tweet uh, and highlighted this point here. Moreover, to the extent that the SEC's request that the court parse each of these filings to determine the underlying facts and legal basis for the enforcement actions and draw conclusions that they are similar to the enforcement action taken against Ripple, the court declines to do so. Ripple disputes the SEC's interpretation of these filings. He also gives a second uh, point here. As mentioned per Jeremy Hogan, I believe the judge asserts a fair notice defense is objective, meaning companies don't need a formal warning. Uh, they should know the objective standards ahead of time. The case will argue if there is a clear objective standard violated. And so uh, just to that point, the court, however, notes that the evaluation of any fair notice defense is objective. It does not require inquiry into whether a particular party actually received a warning that alerted him or her to the danger of being held to account for the behavior in question. So that is a little dicey because what he's saying here, and I believe I read it in another tweet, Wrath of Kahneman uh, posted, he essentially likens it to if you rob a bank and the police arrest you and you say, well, I didn't know it was illegal to rob a bank. Well, that goes against common logic. Of course, we all know it is illegal to rob a bank, but Ripple's defense suggests that, you know, despite how many times they came and asked the SEC, is this fair? Is this legal? Is what we're doing right? The SEC ultimately refused to answer their question. And so uh, this is why we're going to see this play out a little differently or likely going to play out a little differently. Wrath of Kahneman also brings up the Brad and Chris motions to dismiss, and that was denied. There seem to be uh, two points of emphasis here. Because it is civil, the SEC doesn't need to show willfulness of their violation. The judge is ruling that their XRP sales are domestic, not foreign sales originating from U.S. accounts. Uh, again, he says down here, I think we see the issue of objective standards arise. But regardless, their defenses will still hinge on whether Ripple was in violation of selling a security to a large degree. They will have to see the whole thing through. John Deaton also chiming in just on the Brad and Chris uh, lawsuits specifically. The motions to dismiss were on technical grounds pursuant to Rule 12b-6, failure to state a claim. 
It was filed a year ago. The judge assumes the allegations made in the complainant are true when deciding this motion. This was expected. It's not based on the merits or the facts. Dr. Giggles asking uh, down here, is an appeal possible here? And John Deaton saying, no, the only surprise about this ruling is uh, that it took so long and it's 31 pages long. So just some more insight on the uh, Chris and Brad parts of this. I mean, that really doesn't affect us as XRP hodlers. I know we are more focused on the, I think by and large, we are more focused on the overall lawsuit is XRP a security? Uh, and that, even that is still just a small part of it. How is this going to affect cryptocurrency regulatory clarity moving forward? Well, there's also this, guys, I saw from Michael at Val5 Links, Ripple moves to strike rebuttal report on XRP price manipulation. So what we are seeing now, XRP price obviously moving up based on what we saw, based on the verdict that we heard from the court yesterday, but you know, it wasn't a sustained growth. All right, even though it went up over 16%, since its top, it has declined about 7%. So losing uh, about half, almost half of what it saw. But there are experts in this case that are trying to prove otherwise. So let, let me just get to this. Ripple moves to strike rebuttal report on XRP price manipulation. So Ripple has moved to strike an impermissible rebuttal report written by securities and finance expert Albert Metz. Metz, who has worked for the U.S. Department of Justice, submitted his original report on October 4th. Uh, he conducted an event study in order to determine whether or not Ripple was able to manipulate the price of the XRP token with its announcements. He came to the conclusion that certain news and public statements did influence the token's performance. Alan Farrell, however, a professor of securities law at Harvard Law School, argued that XRP was moving in tandem with the broader market. Metz submitted the first rebuttal report in November in response to the defendant's expert. So Dr. Metz, an expert for the SEC, was obviously trying to prove that XRP price was moving based on news. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, or maybe ironically, this may be an example of that. However, I would uh, say that, you know, this is, although we did see price move based on what we heard, we are also seeing just as clearly the price coming right back down. So not sustained momentum, uh, but let me get back to this. So Metz was the SEC's expert and Alan Farrell saying, no, XRP ultimately moves in tandem with the rest of the market. The most recent one is based on counterfactual analysis, aiming to determine the token's expected returns without Ripple's involvement. Its purpose is to quantify the economic significance of the company's public announcements. The defendant argues that the new vision of the initial rebuttal report doesn't contain any error corrections. Instead, it aims to attack the conclusions made by Dr. M. Laurentius Murray and Professor Daniel Fischel, Ripple's rebuttal report who claim that Ripple's announcements only accounted for a modest portion of the token's volatile price movements. And so uh, to my point there, moderately volatile, again, a 17% move up. You know, you compare that to the March 2020 decline in price when all broader markets were moving down. Well, we saw XRP crash along with other cryptocurrencies at that point in time. Jeremy Hogan also chiming in on this expert report and uh, just giving us a tweet thread, how to analyze an expert report. Lawyering 101, read the plaintiff's expert report, fail. Number two, read the defendant's expert report, fail. Number three, realize you do not understand them. If you are the defendant, that is good because it is the plaintiff who has the burden of proof. He goes on to say, Ripple has attacked my favorite issue in the case, whether anything Ripple does as a business substantively affects the price of XRP. Ripple's experts did such a good job at tearing up the SEC's expert that the SEC's expert tried to slip in a belated amendment to his report. This is what has been going on behind the scenes for the last three months. What we are seeing here are just two of the battling experts. Apparently there are 16. So, I mean, if this is any indication of where the case is going, again, let's not forget, Ripple has had a solid case from the beginning, and uh, you know, they I'm, I'm sure they've uh, sourced very, very good experts on all these matters. In this example specifically, they're talking about XRP price uh, volatility, and if it is moving on Ripple News, Clearly we can see the logic behind this too, right? XRP price token, and this can be proven just based on uh, you know looking at the chart. And just as I was mentioning today, yes, price movement, but not sustained. Zooming out on the XRP chart, and we go back to March, 2020, looking at where we were at, at that point in time, and uh, you know, beer flu pandemic, locking down economies, 
you can see and you can correlate this to other markets as well you can see although xrp did rise 16 percent just yesterday this decline was more than 67 percent running in tandem with broader markets so jeremy hogan just highlighting that for us again he says there are 16 experts always remember that if the experts battle to a tie the defendant wins every time so that's another thing that uh, is good for ripple and i don't mean to downplay the importance of these reports they are likely the only evidence of one of the prongs of the howey test the expectations of profit from the efforts of others part uh and so they are vital to the case so the expert reports uh obviously going to play a big part in this and uh, again this is just one that we're hearing here about the uh, price manipulation or price volatility of xrp so i wanted to thank jeremy hogan michael john deaton wrath of kahneman tim uh, I forgot to thank everybody. Stuart Alderati, of course, Brad Garlinghouse. I mentioned John Dean and Coining203. Finally, guys, Micah Paul XRP. Do you guys smell that? If you're an XRP holder, then go outside and tell me that you smell that because I smell an MF in settlement, baby. I'd love to be a fly on the wall right now. So, what are the outcome possibilities a settlement the judge could dismiss the case altogether ultimately though we have joseph grunfest saying you know this is a lose lose situation for the sec just gonna go down here real quick michael paul saying uh, i think they filed the lawsuit knowing they would not win and that's why they filed it right before the 2021 bull run this was always about slowing ripple down ashley responding actually from the looks of it uh, more like to drop the case. Ripple's not going to be paying for anything they didn't do wrong. I'm sure Gary's going to want a settlement. I think that's true. I think the SEC will likely want to get out of this nightmare sooner rather than later. So whether it is a dismissal of the case, whether it is a settlement that ensues because of the SEC. And we got to remember, if a settlement does happen because the SEC wants to bring it to the table, that means Ripple has the leverage, and that would likely mean that Ripple would have better conditions on that settlement. Let's also not forget, uh, as per uh, Charles Gasparino here, he was mentioning that Ripple could also want all the charges from the SEC being dismissed. That could be a possibility. Um, you know, likely that won't happen. However, that is a possible outcome as well. I think the thing though that we have to remember is that this case is now stronger than ever. A Ripple victory is around the corner. And guys, this pump, 16% of course, retracing about 7%. This is just a starting off point in the journey for XRP to attain new all-time highs. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.